Hi, uh, welcome to another video. I'm here and very excited to be here with Kamaru, Joseph Kamaru from Nairobi, Kenya, who's now moved to Berlin, a kind of breakout star of 2020. He's been building his music and sound portfolio for some amount of time, and he seems to have really got lots of recognition recently because he does amazing work. Uh, I'm so grateful for you to join us here today, Kamaru. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Yeah. I nearly called you Joseph, but you just like to be called Kamaru, don't you? So... No, Kamaru or Joseph is fine, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, no um, So, I wanted to talk to you a bit about your creative process and your thoughts about the kind of work that you make. I've got a list of questions. Uh, should we get straight into it? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's Do you, go. Can we start off just by, <laughs> like if somebody wants you to tell, tell us your life story in a few sentences, what do you say about that? Could you give us a brief account of your life so far? Um, yeah, it's been almost everywhere. And yeah, being born and raised like in Nairobi, I've had so many like excursions, not only like in sound or like music, but just different experiences in life and also moving to Berlin. Yeah. It's, yeah, just having these different stories and narratives in everything that I do that I've, I've been exposed to, like, so many things growing up. And, yeah, it's really helped me and nurtured me in, like, the way I am. I'm only 24 years old, yeah. 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 <laughs> Did you have a kind of musical background? Like, were you encouraged to play musical instruments as a kid or anything like that? Not really, but... Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't like encouraged to play an instrument or yeah no one like really pushed me to play an instrument but I was interested or drawn into music practice because um, my grandfather was also a musician and being named a after famous him, musician yeah famous <laughs> musician yeah. and yeah it was it felt like music or like musicianship was just natural and in a high school is when I I took up it like the music as a subject and started learning and learning music theory and yeah that's when i actually took up the guitar to learn how to play. Uh -huh. yeah yeah you start with guitar in the <laughs> conventional way of people starting out in music um and when did you start to explore electronic sounds electronic music and sounds has happened actually later in like making it actually started later in my undergraduate when I had to like borrow my dad a laptop and do my assignments and along the way I discovered yeah you can make music on a laptop which was like really amazing concept and got me excited to explore this world yeah yeah and means that you can produce recorded music more easily than otherwise where you're just playing and you probably didn't have access to recording technology as such yeah then when you discover you can do it in your laptop it's like oh <laughs> yeah no i know that feeling and and your grandfather also joseph Cameroon, your namesake he kind of inspired you in so, so you weren't pushed into music or encouraged to do music necessarily but you must have taken something of the idea of him to carry forward you feel you're kind of carrying forward his kind of legacy <laughs> or you're just doing your own thing and you respect no, what no. he did but separate no it was really important for me actually mm -hmm. when he passed i felt like mm -hmm. there's a burden like bestowed on me and something that i really needed to do and yeah because his later years is when we fully sort of bonded so much and learned so much from him having conversations and speaking a lot about music because that's when he also realized that his grandson is interested in music and the only person who's like fully doing music more like a career right. and yeah he's i feel like I, i'm still like ongoing um continuing like li the lineage of kamaru because he really emphasized on like um the the name Kamaru itself is like was really important for him. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, nice. Um 
and I want to come back to that later, I think, to see, to talk in terms of whether your work, which is not obviously political in the way that his work was political, see if there's some kind of way in which that carries forward. We'll do that in a bit. Um, so I read somewhere that you were a house and techno DJ at some point. Was that a sort of transition bit or is that just a mistake on the internet? Did you have a DJ phase? Yeah, I had a, a DJ face, uh, which was very, very short, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can count how many gigs I've DJed. That's how short it is. Because um, when I started making electronic music a lot, I, I never used to go clubbing or outside. And the first time I decided to be out and watch a live performance or a DJ set is when people recognized me and asked me if I am Kamaru and uh -huh. I didn't know like people actually listened to my music in Nairobi and prompted me to like learn how to DJ and just a means of way to perform the music that I was making then and it was more leaning towards dance oriented club music but also when I listen back to this old music that I was making um, this has some sense of feel recording in a way or like natural sounds that I was just incorporating them but anyway yeah I I said it I learned how to DJ like in two weeks in a <laughs> workshop and we got a residency and I played some few gigs but I had some situations where I really wanted to slow things down and go very um maybe experimental or just do something weird in my performance but was risky in a way but because i knew like the audience and what they really want and how the scene is in nairobi um and yeah it reached a point where i i really wanted to focus on what I was doing, like this more people people considered my music weird in Nairobi and they enjoyed it and I was glad like they knew about this but I wanted like to fully focus on this new Kamaru project. So in twenty nineteen I decided I'll I'll just stop not D I'll stop like DJing and just like focus on this um ambient or like field recording practice that I was like discovering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this year, 2021, you released Log, which I understand was sort of earlier works that you've had as EPs and things along the way. Is that right? And yeah. they're kind of, they're often more kind of melodic and musical, aren't they? And then it's like you've moved more towards, like with, in 2020, you had so many albums. You had Jar, which is kind of, is peaceful, beautiful recordings music it's it's music i'm interested yeah, in that yeah. question about whether you call it music or not because sometimes i see your stuff uh described as like you maybe you're a sound you i think you might have said there that you're a sound artist or people talk about field recordings but it's not just field recordings is it because it, it's it's very musical yeah. there was just yeah. i was going there's jar which is peaceful and beautiful there's um opaca which is maybe somewhere between the two and then there's peel which is more kind of soundscapey it's still got music in it it's recognizable yeah. music but it's very peaceful uh someone described it as a kind of cathedral of sound that they were finding peace in in the covid times interesting yeah, to think yeah. also about yeah the relationship between covid lockdown and making this kind of music um mm. there's a number of things there let's just talk about uh, the covid thing do you think covid everybody being isolated locked up including yourself presumably at certain points do you think that means that people seek out a different kind of music? And do you think that has helped in, you've got loads of recognition in the past year. Do you think that's connected in any way? Um, I was also like really an isolated person myself, just being inside and, but like COVID, it reached a point where I felt like I've been inside the house for for a very long time but I was still experimenting or like making the music which is more of like peaceful or meditative in a way or like calming and yeah Peel wasn't even um, scheduled or even planned to be wasn't like something I I, 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 I was thinking that would 
reach out like to so many people or, or get like this huge recognition but yeah um it happened in between when i just moved back from montreal and i uh, I'd, I'd finished my undergraduate and thinking about my music life and if i'm going to like move to berlin for my masters and everything and i was writing so much music because i was also teaching in 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 Nairobi but i lost my job because covid but i wanted to quit too and yeah i was like in this limbo state try, trying to figure out like my my life and i was finishing projects so i finished job which had started like in the the year before but still pending then i had this week where i was working on peel <laughs> and it just happened so fast and i finished this and i finished also opaca which was also i which was also like supposed to be released the year before even log was finished last year it was supposed to be released last year but there have been so much music um yeah was, he, like I had this like creative drive of just making music and i made so much music inside and um relating also with the whole global situation i think the need to like slow things down and even the music that people were listening i felt like you yeah. know there was more interest to listen to not club music but maybe music just to listen to yeah yeah i mean there's a, there's loads of music in the world including loads of ambient music in the world and still yours got noticed so it's not just that people wanted something gentler or whatever mm. to do with the special quality of your work i don't know if you know yeah. have you got any ideas what that is that people find in your work that they're drawn to and i think it's interesting like peel is kind of the strangest of your albums isn't it it's yeah. kind of most experimental but also um the one that seems to be most widely praised i think seems to be the one that people have especially noticed um mm -hmm. and it's but it's less kind of commercial whatever that means than than the others isn't it it's less sort of obviously melodic or yeah. it's lower and you just got big big pieces of similar sound with interesting things going on in them mm. it's you know it's kind of, it's interesting that this has caught so many people's imagination isn't it yeah um because i remember when when i was when i made the first track i i i i just knew this is going to be an album i usually know this when i make like I, when i'm like, playing around with like tools and realizing that if i make more tracks in this direction hopefully something will um it like end up being a full length album or something and peel happened i when i finished peel i was in traffic it's finished cuz was also like my first drone project which is um like all improvised one take recordings and very long form pieces which i wasn't sure people would <laughs> would listen so i kept it um for some time and sent it to my friend and he really my friend ahosa and desire and he, yeah he told me like yeah you can send this to labels cuz i never used to send my music to labels much and i sent it to peter and some other labels and yeah peter wrote back to me um from editions mego and he really liked it and it happened so fast but like in two months it was fully released and wow the, then yeah like uh it wasn't like expected that people would get so into the the record itself but mm. yeah i also like listen back to it and also like just think about it how it reached so many people and try to understand why yeah, yeah. it attracted so many people yeah in terms of that thing about is it music or is it sound art or is it experimental or is it field recordings what what do you most want to describe it as does it sometimes upset you if people give you the wrong label like yeah yeah if you think uh, you're making great music it could be offensive when somebody calls you a sound artist because it sounds like they think well, it's not really music so we'll call it sound art or 
Yeah, but there's also this idea of what is sound art or like sound. But like I, I started thinking more my more of like my work in in relation to sound itself because that's where I start from. But also I have a musical background. I've studied music for so many years like since high school and different kinds of musics and even performing and dancing these musics and yeah it's it just comes intuitively when when i'm making the music it's also musical but also has elements of of sound and i sometimes i see my work cutting across the art art side like artsy side and also like the musical side of of it yeah yeah because you moved to Berlin to do an MA in, is that called sound studies? Is that right? Yeah. So what kind of people do that? Are they mostly musicians who are interested in the qualities of sound or are they more like people who are focused on sound and not so much music or, or maybe it's a mix? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a diverse selection of um, artists and individuals in the program. Um, you don't even have to have a musical background if you want to take the 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 program because I I have like colleagues who have a background in computer science or like philosophy, and they're interested in this idea and concept of sound. But I I I also like wanted to take this program because I wanted to like discover this other side of this this concept of sound as an entity in itself and not like the musical aspect of it and just like go deep into the philosophy of sound and theories about it. Yeah, because um, how, how I relate to sound and music or like how music is mostly um, from an African context is a bit different and just mm. coming here to like understand like this first year has just been an exploration for me and trying to like see what actually my professors are talking about yeah yeah that, that's yeah. interesting because that whole sort of i i don't know how they teach it there but i would expect that the world of sound studies in berlin it's probably quite european isn't it and the idea of ambient music maybe that's my own kind of perspective but you, you sort of think of that as a largely white European kind of music yeah. and also from the US. So so it's especially interesting for you to be doing that coming from where you come from. And mm. has that, do you think that's given you challenges or do you think it's given you a whole different perspective that other people don't seem to have? Do they, does, do you sometimes feel like an outsider in those worlds or how does that all work? Um, yeah, when, when I applied for the course, I even asked because it's a very intense uh, like application and interviews and I was curious to know if like there's any other sound artist or like person from Africa who has ever been in the program yeah. and unfortunately not and yeah just being here I like the first few weeks I realized oh it's different and this idea of sound studies is like focusing mostly on the European, North American context of sound at John Cage, all this Alvin Lucia. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I decided to do all my projects in school based on what, like my, my, my background in home, all my projects and installations are just works from home and like theories that I grew up knowing about sound and music and because um, in 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 my view, like some communities or like practices in in Kenya or like different parts of Africa, the music is sort of very like to an outside. It's very experimental or noisy. Mm. But like to the people who live there, this is like their way of life and practice, and it's not sound art or like music concrete. It's just like how yeah. they relate to the like the social um, involvement with things and yeah so it's interesting yeah. just to also also be here and 
and learn and experience this and also like trying to like relate this to what I know. Yeah. Yeah. But your perspective being on that course, I, I expect makes the course better for everybody. So, so that's, yeah. <laughs> that's good for them. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully for you. Um, and then, so on the one hand, you're a kind of, they've not had somebody from Africa on this course before even. Um, so you're different in that way, but you're also different because like you're, you're now a well-known recording artist and mm. presumably most of them are not. So that, that also <laughs> is different, isn't it? Like you're playing in Bokeh in the legendary club in Berlin <laughs> and you're friends with Luke Slater and other kind of people from that kind of world who I think of Luke Slater as a kind of techno guy, but yeah, yeah. also seems to be doing kind of experimental things like that collaboration with you. Um, so, so you're in an interesting position, aren't you? But uh, it's good that I think you have the confidence to just carry on and, and do what you do. And, and that's great. Yeah, I, I think I'm, yeah, I'm grateful for like this artistic side of like my practice because mm. yeah, in school, I'm just very, I'm stand and focused to do like my, write my papers and do everything. But most of my um, colleagues in school are usually, some of my friends are telling me like, well, what are you doing in, in Udeka, are you already <laughs> doing stuff already outside? But yeah, um, for me, it's the experience and yeah, that I'm 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 really keen for, yeah, yeah. And it must give you some different inputs and different people to meet and different things to think about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess. And and you moved to Berlin, so that would have been summer 2020 when the is that right? When the pandemic was still, well, you know, starting up as we now know. And and so were you on Zoom a lot? Have you have you had in-person classes? Um, yeah, the first like winter semester, we had like maybe two classes on in, 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 in person, but most of them were on Zoom. But good thing you could access the studios and Okay. And facilities in school, but when there's like the idea of second wave coming um like this past semester this summer semester has gone so fast and everything has been online yeah, yeah. so yeah did you choose berlin because obviously berlin's really famous for its electronic music culture is that what you wanted to go and join and then presumably joining it has been less straightforward than than it would normally be <laughs> um I was here in 2019 and it was actually my, my first time outside Africa and just, and it was when I was starting to like discover more experimental musicians and artists and being here for CTM for like two weeks, um, I think I just had an eye opener of what I was doing was something right wasn't wrong like I wasn't making a mistake so going mm. back home I was like so motivated and I was still in in college in university finishing my degree and as soon as I finished I was um, like I had like a different concept of of sound and music that I wanted to like read more and understand yeah mm -hmm. yeah if we could go back to the um the thing about your grandfather who was a political figure wasn't he yeah. um through his work and then in some ways you're carrying the torch of joseph Cameroon, but obviously you're not doing you're not a singer songwriter you're not doing campaigning kind of songs or anything like that um but do you still see the work as political in some way do you think it explores any kind of like some people think ambient music is just kind of soothing new age mm -hmm. it's you know pleasant and that's kind of it and, and that serves a role because it's nice to have something soothing and pleasant in modern hectic life but do you think about it having any kind of uh you know different role that's more about opening up ideas or anything political to it how do you think about it in those terms yeah um like since last year i've been thinking so much about like different context and narratives that are, i'm trying to like cut across through my music through my music and works um and mostly i was separating 
like my music into like installation works which I'm sort of focusing more on a discourse that I want to like people to like ex- explore and learn from it and like my music is just for people to listen but also I've been leaning more towards this idea of listening a lot in my practice that I try and sort of um posit this in my work that I'm making and yeah just like this like idea of listening and also being in school and learning this different modes of listening <laughs> and for me it's just it's not very like political as my grandfather that he's trying to like push a certain topic which is very um huge in its discourse for me i'm just thinking more of like this aspect of of listening because i've i've been doing this a lot since i moved here and also um how i approach like like my creative process um like stems from the idea of listening and also like my background in field recording and just thinking about spaces that i'm recording yeah Mhm. And so when you say listening is important to you what 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 do you mean Would you say a bit more about that what's the thing about listening that is important? Yeah, um when when I started field recording or this idea of field recording um for me it was an intriguing like concept that I could have a device and record my environment and like have an extended pair of ears to listen to my surrounding yeah. and then i was like capturing sort of so many sounds and not thinking much about the context of the spaces or like the people i'm recording on the sites that i'm recording and i was involved in a project that really pushed me to understand the sites and spaces that I'm recording and this put me in a situation where I had to like listen fast before even thinking of going to a specific uh location to record and for me I think in my practice of field recording or thinking about uh an environment or a place that I want to go and record it first has to come from this idea of listening of me as a body or as a human being in a specific place um like what's my role in this site um as an artist or as a sound artist as a field recordist and it just draws me back to yeah like being mindful and listening and yeah um uh, it's sort of drew me or like <clears throat> encourage me more and more just to listen to like my surroundings and my immediate environment and just being aware of what's happening not just um carrying my recorder and going to a place and recording sounds and coming back and uh-huh. sort of appro- appropriating the sounds yeah <laughs> So do you think it means you have more kind of care for a space because you're paying you're paying a special kind of attention aren't you you walk you go around with your actual uh recorder and your headphones on hearing sounds that otherwise maybe you wouldn't really think about or most people wouldn't really think about they're just kind of happening but you're paying special attention to them and and maybe that creates a sort of sense of like a greater connection to the environment or a greater kind of care for it it's it's more of like intentionality of uh-huh. like what i'm really doing yeah or like yeah. recording yeah i did a book called making is connecting which was about how if you're someone in the world who has the engagement with the world where you're making things in the world then it puts you in a different kind of position to if you're you know a lot of people are familiar especially by the end of the 20th century people are familiar with basically being consumers you sit watch television you go to work you come back sit watch television that kind of thing as kind of consumer oriented way of doing things you just and in terms of culture you receive stuff made by 
other people elsewhere. Um, and then with the internet coming along and DIY music and, and other ways in which people were, seem to be finding new ways to be creative, you've got more of a kind of engagement with the world because you're making things. And so you realize you can be a creative in the world. So you're participating and not just consuming. Um, and I'm saying that now not to talk about my book in particular, but because uh, it sort of reminds me what you're saying. If you're if you're listening to the world in that sort of deep way, you're going to feel more connected to it, more part of it, and maybe more concerned for it. And maybe there's a sort of environmental dimension where people have forgotten to have the amount of care for the world that we should have for the world. And then uh, this kind of approach to field recording and sound maybe means at least for you and also for people listening to your work, I guess, that they, you might listen to sounds in a new way and environments in a new way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel, or I think like through listening, there's um, sort of a bridge towards like even understanding like one another or just realizing how much there is um, mm. sort of like an um, anthropocentric way of like doing things yeah yeah and sort of similarly um i was reading about minimalism and i think often people sort of think minimalism sometimes it seems like a kind of joke like where does artworks that are sort of almost nothing and a lot of people don't really understand why you would do this and it kind of seems like nothing and what's the point but um i've, I've read something inspiring about how it's about essentially stripping everything away to see what's left. Like it's like taking away all the unnecessary elements and seeing what is at the kind of root of things. I don't know if all minimalist artwork is actually doing that, but that seemed like a, a nice sort of way of thinking about it. And I didn't know if you thought in your got quite sparse ambient minimal works, if you have any sense of sort of doing that, of sort of getting down to like the essentials and maybe in the actual process of making music, you do you find yourself taking things out in order to get to what is the sort of essential element at the heart of it? Or am I just saying things that you don't connect with at all? <laughs> you don't have to agree. I'm just interested in if you've got any connections with that. Um, yeah, I, I have like projects where I'd... Yeah, maybe a good example is Pew, which is only like one take recordings of... Um, of an improvised and I'm, I'm just like attenuating like the volume and like elements coming in and coming out but I, I wasn't sure if I was thinking about like this minimal aspect it's more of like this intuition of like making the piece and because I made like different iterations and pieces and decided which one would fit well together but I have projects where I have so many tracks and before rendering everything i ha i just mute one element or like one main element of the piece and see how it sounds without it and i i try and do this in most of my projects where i'd remove the main element and just like leave it as mute and leave it at, leave it as it is yeah yeah but i always yeah like less is more sometimes yeah yeah uh-huh I suppose I'm kind of digging to see if there's a kind of political way because minimalism sometimes, and I don't know if you probably, it seems like maybe you don't really connect with the idea of minimalism. It's more, maybe it's more just like, you seem like a gentle kind of person. And so you make a gentle kind of music and it doesn't need to be connected to ideas like minimalism. But um, I was just sort of seeing if there was a, a sort of political dimension to that really. There doesn't need to be. <laughs> mm. It's just interesting to dig into. Um, you're in Germany and also in Germany somewhere and also around the world. There's this movement called Wandelweiser. Have you heard about that? This is it's a very white European kind of thing, um, which, which is it's very quiet music, basically. It's kind of in the classical music realm or mm. art music realm. Um, and you can you can get recordings of it. Um, it, but it's essentially super quiet and it's about the idea that you like you said we've got a quote here about being very present in the moment of listening and because because it's i mean it's not just quiet that's not its only characteristic obviously but it is 
largely choir. Yeah. And and so I've never been to a Wanderlweiser concert because I only heard about it recently. We don't even have concerts anymore. But um, it seemed to be about, like in, in Wanderlweiser concerts, when everyone's attending very closely, even mm. because it's barely there, you know. And you sort of think with music that's very quiet, it's hard for people to attend to, and maybe they they sort of wouldn't. But people really attend to it because of its quiet nature. And there's something about, um, there's a metaphor that's about, you might find this interesting, there's a metaphor that's about like in a city you have a square, which is, and the square is kind of nothing. It might just be like a space flat with nothing in it. And the square yeah. is defined by the things that are around it, basically. You've got stuff around it. And so the square is a thing, and the square is an important thing. It's kind of the centre of the city, but also it's kind of, it might have a monument or something, but it's basically a large space of nothing. <laughs> um, yeah. I thought it was interesting to think about music like that, to think about the spaces which are not things, or not very much things, but also can be kind of central, and people attend to them <laughs> because they're the thing where, where something isn't happening. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this idea of like, uh, I didn't know about like this wonder music guys, but um, I try in my music just to create this sort of subliminal elements in like the pieces where they're very low in volume, but still present. And <clears throat> the more you listen to the music, often the more you get to hear these elements. Mm. Um, maybe in your head or like from your ear and it's sort of these tones that sort of generate themselves but they're in the piece but you sort of think they're there um mm. but they're very subliminal <laughs> yeah yeah that's interesting yeah. um in your own creative process like i've seen videos about how you go about doing things essentially you seem to collect sounds for starters you collect field recordings and then sort of layer them up and then add in sometimes some more musical elements afterwards uh is that is that now like your process that's what you do and you, you go out and do that or do you to what extent has that sort of evolved or changed or do you think that might change a lot in the future is that now is that what Cameroon does um at the moment i think that's what i've been doing mostly where I just base most of my compositions or pieces from field recordings or yeah, I can start with a field recording and make a composition, but it's, yeah, I, I just try and make different kinds of musics. Um, not necessarily also with field recordings, like yesterday night I was just jamming. I decided to only play with analog stuff uh -huh. and see what happens and yeah, not necessarily focus on this one direction of um, what people expect to be hard from me. Um, is there something you'd say you've learnt about your own creativity that you didn't know five or ten years ago? What have you learnt about you and making things? Yeah, um, this this idea of field recording for me was very naive when I started. I didn't know about Chris Watson or all this field recording artists before. So I just bought my recorder and I was recording sounds in the in the house and um, making sounds, like making collages with this <coughs> sounds that I'm collecting or recording and putting them in a DAW and sort of trying and get textures out of them but this was you know this was just uh for me like like uh, compositional tools that i could use for for a piece and then later discovering or even just being in school and thinking about what i was doing before is actually an art practice is just intriguing for me just to realize how mm. there's a whole discourse on this and um about it it's just being it's 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 i think it's amazing to just like start making music or thinking about what you really want to make not knowing what's already happening and then along the way you discover all these great musicians and artists who are doing um this practice 
but um, creative wise, so like my process has just been like the same, even um, when I'm making more like texture based compositions and field recordings and things. I think I'm in the same mindset as I was um, before, maybe just with new um, equipment or stuff that I use for comp making music, but it's still the same direction of how I approach um, making music. And also like this idea of time really changed so much in my music where it, intuitively I, I reached a point where I wasn't thinking about like the metronome or like following a, a certain grid of, of, of things that are happening and just plugging in a synth and like recording and layering and continue like making a, a, a narrative and um, I ended up making very long form compositions which was only maybe for me to listen to, but I didn't know if people would sit down and listen to 40 minute pieces. And this is something that um, I'm, I'm using a lot like in my works where, yes, I'm thinking about, I think with my background in music theory and keys and knowing what works well, it's easy just to, yeah, it's, you just feel like if it works, it'll work. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And yeah, mm. not thinking so much about the time of um, the length or should I be on a certain click or something. Yeah, yeah. it's more of <laughs> my intuition and... Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, which works. So good. So what's, what's next for you? Are you going to stay in Berlin beyond the course, do you think? Maybe there's two years of the course? That's two years. Okay, so you've got another year of that. Yeah, it, well, my master's is three years. Um, three years? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I have two more years. I think mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be based here and in Nairobi. Yeah. I was to release a new Mego Peel 2 <laughs> for Peter next year, but um, yeah, he, he, he passed, but uh, I'll still like make a, a record. Yeah, for next year. Um, currently, I've just been working on like site-specific installation, multi-channel pieces, mm -hmm. and yeah, not. Um, I haven't like sat down and made music. Music. It's more like towards art-oriented pieces. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Because uh, your newfound fan base. <laughs> We're needing more stuff. <laughs> Can I just start making installations that we have to go to Berlin for when we're not allowed to travel to Berlin? Uh, first, interesting. It's interesting to see you exploring new kind of territory, doing new things. That sounds great. Um, that was really good and very interesting. Thank you so much for spending the time talking to me. Uh, I love your work, so it's great to have the chance to to talk. I like digging into the stuff about um, the meaning of your quiet meditative kind of work that's really interesting yeah i i just like think my myself or how i am as a <laughs> i'm very calm in yeah and it reflects reflects a lot in my in my work in some way yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah i think you it was a very calm nice conversation great thank you um well keep doing your amazing work You've got lots of fans around the world now, so uh, that's really good. Uh, it, mu it must be strange for you, because I don't suppose you can picture what that means. <laughs> can you? It must be strange to <laughs> this level of uh, you know recognition that you've got now that you didn't have two years ago. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, I think when I was in, yeah, I just like think about it and it's like so insane how um, I just started like on on like my dad's work lap to, to just make music and experiment and staying so much time in my bedroom. And I think only recently is when like even my, my mom mostly like realized how <laughs> I usually tell them like, you guys, do you know how my music like has reached so many people? And I'm not sure if they really know, <laughs> but like they're super grateful and yeah. 
yeah. <laughs> nice. And um, well, I hope one day your mother appreciates. <laughs> she does. She does. Do. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I keep doing your great work. I hope that you're able to enjoy Berlin and connect more with actual humans as the COVID <clears throat> passes, hopefully. Um, and it's great to be in touch with you. So thank you for doing this. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Yeah.